everyone. Let me discuss uh, some of the chronological details of Cronyism. When does it start? The early years of Cronyism, especially the 15th century onwards. Uh, you may have studied in history uh, what led to the part of what led to the growth of Cronyism. Maybe, for example, you may have heard about the uh, part of Constantinople. The Ottoman Turks conquered Constantinople and how it led to developments in sea trade and the uh, writings of Marco Polo, etc. So, we will be seeing in action uh, some of the aspects of some of the major events. So, one of the important figures in the history of colonialism is Henry the Navigator, the Prince of Portugal. In 1421, he established the School of Navigation and inaugurates the Age of Global Maritime Exploration by European nations. So you can see, uh, it maybe began with the navigator and his establishments of uh, and uh, his uh, strengthening of patronizing of uh, maritime activities. So Prince Henry the Navigator was born in 1394 and died in 1460. He is mainly remembered in Portuguese history as the founder of an early 15th century school of navigation in the history of Cyprus on the southwestern tip of Portugal and the inventor and the disputer of the Caravan. The son of King Joao I of Portugal and Philippa of Lancaster, Henry lived at a time when Portugal had her eyes anxiously set on exploring land across the sea and, and in particular around the coast of Western Africa. So, this year, 1421, is a significant year in the history of colonialism. And then comes with, comes the 1430s. You know that the Portuguese navigators, uh, they were one of the earliest colonizers and they were ruthless colonizers, you, you may have heard. Uh, even Portuguese, they came to India even. So Portuguese navigators explore the west coast of Africa in 1430s. And uh, African slaves were first introduced into Portugal in 1434 and the slave trade flourished in the plantations and other uh, areas. So you can see a uh, representative image of uh, slaves being brought to Portugal. Another significant uh, period is 1480s uh, during which fishing fleets from west of England probably visiting Newfoundland caught fisheries by this time. Uh, 1480s, you can see a representative image. Cod fishing in Newfoundland uh, happened uh, during this 1480s period. And in the 1490s, we can see the Portugal has begun to ship slaves from Benin to work on sugar plantations on Atlantic islands of Sao Tome and uh, Madeira. 1490 is a significant year in which a slave and the slave trade has and in 1492, 1492 is a significant year, uh, the year in which the Columbus uh, arrived in the Caribbean. He lands at San Salvador in 12th October and then Cuba and Hispaniola, the modern Haiti. Three further voyages in next 10 years with the land force at Jamaica, Antigua, Puerto Rico, Grenada, Trinidad, St. Vincent, St. Lucia. Honduras, Costa Rica, Panama. So, 1492 uh, becomes a very significant uh, era in the history of colonialism. And in 1497, you can see John Cabot, Cabot uh, on his voyage of exploration for Henry VII, uh, sites and names Newfoundland. Okay. We have seen that even before uh, him, maybe uh, fishing you know, uh, activities may have. They may have reached Newfoundland, but he is the person who named Newfoundland in 1497. And in 1498, we can find a uh, Spanish settlement established on Hispaniola. Uh, colonists sent uh, 600 indigenous carriers back to Spain to be sold as, as slaves. And uh, Spaniards become another monstrous kind of, you know, uh, 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 no, uh, such a kind of colonizers without uh, any uh, touch of humanity, you know, uh, ruthless colonizers, they turned out to become, uh, in the later periods, we can see 
uh, so in today's discussion i have just mentioned the major events happened in the 15th century and in the next class we will be uh, seeing some of the uh, major developments in the 16th century thank you